Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode in this Pi game tutorial series. In today's episode, we're going to be creating a collision mechanic for our game. This collision mechanic will allow us to display when the enemy is being hit by a bullet. So at the minute, at the moment, you can see that whenever I hit the enemy with a bullet, nothing happens. But at the end of this tutorial, we want there to be a console output that tells us that the enemy is being hit by a bullet. Similarly, we also want a console output whenever the enemy walks into our main character. So that is going to be what we're trying to do today. And um, the black boxes, which you can see on the screen right now, are the hitboxes, which are the result of the last tutorial. Now, I had a question come up recently whether these black boxes will be seen in the final version of the game. And the answer is, of course, that they won't be visible in the final version. The black boxes surrounding the enemy and the character are simply for visualizing the, the hitboxes and they allow us to sort of understand what happens behind the scenes. So that's why I'm going to leave them in for the moment. Okay, so let's move on to the code. The code up in the editor at the moment is the result of several episodes and uh, if you are not familiar with the code that I have here, then make sure to watch the preceding episodes in this Pi game tutorial series to make sure that you're up and running and up to date with what is up um, in my editor. And uh, for those of you who are just joining in, let me just give you a brief overview of what these, the code that I have in the editor encompasses. So, um, at the beginning, we're sort of creating our window. We call the window win. Uh, and the window is simply the screen in which the game is being played. In addition to that, we have uh, imported all the necessary images in these lines of code over here that I've highlighted. Then we have the class for our hero. The hero was the character which we control. And um, I've minimized all these classes just to make it look less clunky. We also have a class for our bullet, which is the projectile which we shoot, and a class for our enemy, which is, of course, the enemy. Then at the very end, we have the instances of the class uh, hero, the instance of the class enemy, and at the very end, there's our main loop. Now, remember, the code is always going to be available down uh, in the description below. There's going to be a link to my GitHub. So if you want the code, make sure to check that out. And uh, a final thing that remains to be said that on the left hand side of my screen, I have all the images. Uh, the images of my enemy are the ones that I've highlighted here. And the images of my hero are the ones that I've highlighted here. And uh, that's sort of what they look like. All right, so let's jump in and create the collision mechanic. I'm going to add a function to our hero class. And this function is going to be called hit. And this function will sort of allow us to print out in the console whenever a bullet hits the enemy. So I'm going to write define the function hit, and it only takes the instance of the um, class as a parameter. And we're going to say that for enemy, 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 and enemies, and for bullet, bullet in bullets, in self.bullets, bullets, we want to check whether the enemy is being hit. Now, I am going to copy a line of code into the editor just to make sure that we spend more time on the explaining and less time on the typing. So this is a pretty long line of code and let me just tell you uh, in a sort of visualized way what it accomplishes. So this is the code that I've just copied in and the, oh, hold on, let me highlight it. And the visualization for it is sort of here. So I've put a screenshot into a paint document and you can see that there's a 
an x-axis and a y-axis, and this red dot that I'm moving around is a bullet. And um, now, what we want, what we, what we want to accomplish is quite simple. Whenever we shoot a bullet and it moves towards the enemy, we want to check when the bullet is within the boundaries of the small square surrounding the enemy, so within the hitbox of the enemy. And there's two things that we need to check. We need to check that the x coordinates of the bullet are within the enemy's hitbox, but we also want to check that the y coordinates are within the enemy's hitbox. And the reason why the y coordinates are also important is that, remember, our character can jump. So if our character is somewhere up in the air and is shooting a bullet that sort of flies above the enemy, we want to check whether the bullet is above the enemy or not. So if a bullet is traveling sort of over the enemy, that is, of course, not a hit. And that is exactly what this line of code is checking. So this inequality here checks whether the x-coordinate of the, of the bullet is within the boundaries of the enemy's hitbox, right? So that's why I'm writing enemy.hitbox over here and enemy.hitbox over here. And this is sort of um, what we have on one side. And in addition to that, we're combining uh, the first statement with an AND to the second statement. And the second statement, which is, which is what I'm going to highlight over here, uh, this second statement checks the Y coordinate. Uh, so that means the uh, Y coordinate, that would be sort of uh, the uh, vertical axis, whether the bullet is within uh, the range that I'm sort of wobbling the bullet in right now. All right, so now if this returns true, we of course want the console to output that it is a hit. So print, and we're gonna say hit. Now the last thing we need to do is we need to create a call to this function, and we're going to create the call to the function in the shoot function in the class hero. So we're gonna say self.hit, hit. There we go. Now, when we run this game now, and I shoot a bullet towards the enemy, nothing happens. Now, this is a sort of deliberate small mistake I've made, um, because the reason why nothing is happening is because the bullet is moving just, just at the tip of the top of the hitbox of the enemy. So we need to make the hitbox of the enemy slightly sm uh, slightly larger, I mean, to make sure that the bullet is actually totally enclosed within the hitbox so that we get a legitimate hit. So I am going to make a small change to the hitbox of the enemy. So I'm in the class enemy over here, as you can see. Then in the hitbox over here, I am going to say that self.x, um, uh, that's all right for the moment. I'm going to say that we're moving the hitbox up a little bit by decreasing the Y value, and we are going to make it larger by increasing this value over here. And since the hitbox is slightly bit uh, a slight bit off on the X axis, I am just going to increase this value to 20 from 15. And now uh, we should be golden. All right, so now you can see the hitbox is a bit larger and encloses the enemy a bit better. And now when I um, uh, shoot the enemy, you can see that down here in the console, which I'm highlighting, you can see the uh, word hit printed out. So let me go ahead and run this again and pay attention to the console output. And you'll see that it returns hit whenever uh, the bullet hits the enemy. So the bullet is traveling and it hits, and that is exactly what is printed out in the console. So now that mechanic is working really well. The next thing we want to do is we want the console to output hit um, whenever the enemy walks into our hero. So that is going to be pretty simple. Um, it is uh, pretty much the same 
mechanic uh, that works for the bullet. So I'm going to move to the class enemy, which is uh, the one I'm in at the moment, which is convenient. And I am going to say that under this move function, I'm just going to create another one. I'm going to say define, and I'm going to define hit and self. And I'm going to go ahead and paste in um, this uh, a condition which is similar to the one for the bullet. Um, so now we just need to check that the hitboxes are sort of uh, on top of each other and colliding. So let me just go ahead and copy and paste. And then um, backspace over here. Yeah, so this condition which I've just pasted in uh, is basically checking whether the hitboxes are colliding. Um, and if the hitboxes are colliding, we want to print out that uh, the enemy hit player, player. Uh, and over in the first hit, which we've sort of um, created a moment ago, we want to say player hit enemy. All right, so that should be our mechanic done. And the final thing which remains to be done is that we need to call this hit function from uh, some class. So we're gonna call it from the move function. So we're gonna say self.hit. And that should do the deal. Let me go ahead and run this program again. And now what you'll see is that as soon as, so I'm running away from the enemy, and as soon as I walk into this enemy, uh, it is going to display hit. So watch the console output. When the enemy comes back, I am going to run into it. So uh, now I've run into it, and you'll see down in the console output, it says enemy hit player. And similarly, if I fire a bullet, it says, um, hold on, it doesn't say anything. Oh, hold on. Player hit enemy. Yeah, that's correct. So we're the player and we hit the enemy. So that uh, console output at the bottom is correct. And so that is our collision mechanic working for the moment. Let me demonstrate it a couple more times. So this is the bullet and this is uh, us walking into the enemy. Um, yeah, so it works perfectly. And in the next episode, we are going to uh, create a health bar that allows us to sort of display how much health we have. All right, that's going to be it for this episode. Um, make sure to leave this video a like if you enjoyed it and learned something new, and consider su subscribing to the channel if you want to stay updated on this series. See you in the next one.